All right, let's go over the rack back here. A lot of people always wonder what's in my rack, and I've noticed Cloud Computing made a current video, and then Linus Tech just dropped, hey, here's what's in my rack, and uh, I couldn't be more different than these two. Both fantastic creators, but I wanted to actually show how I utilize my rack, because one big difference that you're gonna notice immediately is this is in all my shots. It's within about four feet of me. Uh, you can't really notice it as look far back there, but I'm using a very like wide angle lens and it depends on my positioning. But if I do this, you can see my arms start to distort because of this lens. And I do that mainly to make this little closet that I'm in feel bigger. So with that, let's jump into what all I have here because one, I had to modify every single piece of equipment to have just whisper quiet operation as when I'm filming, you don't wanna be hearing that. The whirling of fans, that's the first thing. Second thing, heat. Heat is a big deal in this guy and it produces a ton of heat. So what do I do with all that? Uh, if I'm not blowing a ton of fan and it's such a small enclosed space, we are about 80 square feet in this room. Most people don't realize it is that small, but we're looking about 8 by 10 is the dimensions of this room. Actually, probably a little bit smaller, so probably around 70, 75, because that door is actually, uh, I, I actually made that caddy corner just so I could get my <laughs> attic ladder down outside of it because it is in my garage. So with all that, let's jump into this entire build because there's a lot going on here. Let's start at the top here with the PF Sense box. This is a fantastic box. I absolutely love everything about this box. I've actually went out of my way. This is a NetGate XG7100. I paid a little over $1,000 for this box, but I love it so much because I can do a lot of different things. You can see over here, I'm using PF Blocker to block a ton of like ads, bad actors. I even do geo blocking. So if someone's like, hey, this is a registered hacker or whatever it might be from overseas, it'll probably block most instances of it. You can see I am blocking a ton of traffic with this. I do a lot of different configurations here and I absolutely love it. I, I really don't have much to add. I probably should do more PF Sense videos uh, because it's by far probably the best firewall I've ever used. Probably one of the biggest things about it, if you go to OpenVPN, you can do a lot of cool stuff here and they have like little wizards in here uh, where you can actually set up your VPN and this right here using like OpenVPN, you can actually make it to where it'll export like a MSI file if you're on Windows and it's just an all encompassing file to where you can just run it, hit connect, type in your username and password and then you're on the network. Uh, I love how PFSense has everything set up. It has great diagnostics. I can do anything I could possibly want to do in a gateway and you just can't beat this top box. I, I can't say anything else really, other than I need to make more videos about VF Sense. Next up is gonna be my Aruba Instant On. This 1930 24 gig, uh, 24 port switch. It has 10 gig capabilities and PoE. A lot of performance packed into a small box, but I've run into a massive problem with this switch. If we look into here, uh, this is just basically what we're gonna see. You get a nice little heads up display. Obviously, I've taken all the 10 gig out. We're going to go into that here in a second. Uh, but if you look over here, the power over ether, uh, Ethernet, you can see kind of my current usage. Now, I've basically started to whittle this down, but the big thing here is I'm still getting a little bit of faults, even though I've started kind of carving up the switch a little bit more, moving more things off of it because... I was seeing exclamation marks and I was getting some port faults. And even on my live streams, I would occasionally get a disconnect because it would fault that would knock that specific system offline and then it would reconnect. Very annoying. And a lot of that is dealing with the cooling aspect of it and why I removed the 10 gig. Overall, I would say this is a decent switch as long as noise isn't a concern because modifying it like I have, I highly recommend don't doing <laughs> because even with two um, Noctua switches, it hasn't been good. It has not been good at all and uh, sad space, but that brings us to the Microtech switch, which is coming up next. 
Now, the Microtex are an unbelievable deal. They're so cheap. I think this whole 10 gig switch was like 200 bucks, which is super, super cheap in this realm. Has good hardware. However, it has this, router OS. It's a bit of an ugly duckling. Let me log in here for you. This is my current uh, <laughs> router OS. And I gotta say, it's a little bit clunky, a little bit buggy not the best obviously i think this is only it only does layer two but you could i i know you're no one's gonna buy a microtech for for a lot of the advanced uh things you need to do however for unmanaged or, or, or layer two you, this is totally fine i absolutely love this one so much that i'm gonna go ahead and replace my aruba which i am having problems with mainly because the microtechs are good hardware and they have fanless design, meaning there's no fans in any of these, so I never have to worry about noise other than maybe a, a buzzing sound or something like that, but never an actual fan noise, which is a big concern for me. So these things, absolutely amazing. Love them so much. Uh, it's just dealing with this UI, not the best. Next up's gonna be the Synology box. I love this box. Now, it, actually it says 70 terabytes here, but this actually I can push up to about 104 terabytes uh, because I've done something a little wild. One, I wanna use, usually you want about 25% util utilization, maybe into the 50%, anything over 50% you need to start thinking about expansion. Just, you know, the CISA had made me thinking, but uh, I can actually expand this out. Looking at the drive bays here, let me pull them up. You'll notice I have one terabyte of cache. That's an NVMe. And then in my storage pool, I have all these 16 terabyte drives. Obviously, it doesn't register the full 16 terabytes, but I have all six of them actually allocated to a Synology hybrid RAID, which is actually pretty good. But you're thinking, well, wait a second. Titus, you got eight drives. Well, I've already dedicated these two to hot spares. This means when one of these files, uh, one of these inevitably fails, I can easily go ahead and grab one of these hot spares. Or let's say I start just jamming out and really filling up 100 terabytes pretty quick, which I don't see anytime soon. Maybe when I move to 4K rendering, uh, I might do that. Uh, obviously, I'll eat up a little more space, but even then, I don't think I'll really touch these. However, I could easily allocate these hot spares differently. I could take these hot spares, add them to this pool, effectively taking all of that, tacking it in. So I have about 30 terabytes. I could just go ahead and push this up to 100 terabytes if I wanted to. Obviously not needed. And the reason why I didn't do that is why put wear and tear on these drive if I don't have to. Just putting them in hot spare standby mode is probably the best way. It's not going to see a lot of usage, but it's there if I need it. And then should the worst happen and I start filling up all these drives, I could always allocate them for more. I absolutely love this box. The other thing I'll probably leave you with here is I do do a lot of video editing directly on this box. Uh, we'll get down into the next box, which is the Mac Mini, but you'll see I have all of my FCP type stuff right here so all of these i can edit in real time under a 10 gig connection which if you're not familiar having a hard drive attached to a pc i'm a little cavalier and i can wipe out my system a lot and i like just having it all on my nas box i never have to worry about it because i can just directly edit and scrub my videos real time on this nas box and mac mini can blow up mid edit throw up another mac mini and i'm back in business so it's fantastic uh, throughput on this is somewhere in about the 200 megabytes per second, uh, a little over one gig, uh, probably around two gig or so, uh, two gigabit that you're getting through this. Mainly the bottleneck here is the spinning platter drives. Using those 16 terabyte spinning platter drives obviously slows it down a bit, and that is my bottleneck. I could push this about five times more if I did a pure NVMe raid, but I'm not made of money, and doing 100 terabytes on an NVMe is a lot of money. <laughs> so that's what I use for this. I do also use an iSCSI too, and you can see I actually have a couple different things sitting here uh, for this. I have one iSCSI dedicated to VMs. I can attach this to a lot of like Proxmox, XCPNG, VMware, whatever I wanna do, I usually just toss this on there. And then also I have the LUN1, which this is actually a gaming one. So my Windows boxes, what I'll do is I'll attach this iSCSI drive 
and then I can stream games or play games directly off my NAS. Obviously, it's just storage. This is actually called DAS, Direct Attached Storage, and that's uh, kind of what I use my Synology box for. Now, moving down into here, this is kind of what I use this for. Uh, you'll notice a little bit funky on my network design because the Final Cut Pro, I actually use a complete crossover cable and it has all of my stuff. So I can usually just come into my Mac box here and launch into this. From here, you should be able to see kind of whatever project I'm working on. This is what I use Macs for. Uh, Final Cut Pro, I think, is the best video editor, hands down. You can do pretty much whatever you want in here and it works extremely well. So this right here is the project and this is pulling directly from the NAS and you can see real time that scrubs so well and that's all 10 gig. None of this is local storage and you can just go wild. The big thing with the Mac mini is you get so much performance for so little dollars. It's just the storage they give you is just absolute crap. You're going to burn through half a gig on like one video, you know? So I always use the FCP. Uh, I would say if you're going to do this, I highly recommend using NFS shares. Uh, so I always set it up as NFS and then I do a crossover to where I don't even push this through my switch. It's 10 gig to 10 gig on my Synology and I set up a, just a basically a, a crossover. So it goes right into that Synology, right out of it. My switch could honestly be unplugged and I could still scrub these videos uh, at near real-time performance. So you get really good. Look at that. Ah, can't even break it. So it's it's awesome. And I'm going to just go ahead and quit out of it. And we're done. So that's, <laughs> that's that in a nutshell. That's my Mac Mini. Love it for what it is. But usually when I'm done, I just go right back to my Linux or Windows box. Now, next up on the list, you'll see that we have the old Raspberry Pi. Now, the Raspberry Pi, this isn't the Raspberry Pi over here. This is just my main desktop, but it uses my 3CX phone system. I did a video on that. I'll link that up above where it just kind of shows you how to build an office phone system because I don't want to pay a bunch of money for my office phone, and that's a good way of doing it. I pay about, I'd say, around 25 cents a month for my phone's service and i just use 3cx hosted through the raspberry pi now next up is that little screen you see now i don't this is actually what's behind the screen is this just jets nano developer kit now jets nano is like a better version of the raspberry pi if you want to do gpu based stuff and my idea was to build rebuild like the retro pi pi uh ah, a retro pi project with this uh, I really want to do more retro gaming, but also wanted to utilize some like game streaming a bit more, like playing Warzone on this Jetson Nano and those types of things, because I have uh, what's called Moonlight, which is set up right here. You can see how I switch back and forth. This is actually not Windows. This is actually just a secondary box, which we're going to get into a second. This is my game stream box. I don't have a monitor hooked up to it. It's just headless. I use it to stream all my games and you see this is kind of i got a mishmash of windows only utilities or things that just work better on windows I'll, I'll go ahead and toss it up here and that's how i do all my windows videos it's how i'm constantly in and out so usually if you see me in windows i'm actually you know it's, it's kind of a, a little bit of a mind mess with here but i'm usually actually in linux even though i'm in windows and yes the the performance you get out of these is just as performant as you'd be on the box. I think the lag time is around 40 milliseconds. I probably should do it, a video on this. I think uh, I did one a couple years back. I'll, I'll link it up above. But I absolutely love being in both operating systems and being able to easily switch between them and utilize them at their fullest potential. Now, it does require two boxes, which we're going to get into. Moving on to here, this is my stream PC. I don't really have any screen caps because I'm recording right now. My stream PC is actually a 2700 with 32 gigs of RAM and a 1660 uh, for the Invent 2. So that's also an NVIDIA box, uh, mainly because I want to record and stream at the same time. It makes it very easy. Also, I am pulling in all my camera angles. What Whatever you're seeing here is all from real time. So anytime I'm streaming, 
everything happens in real time. I'm actually processing that post, doing my compressor, limiter, all that in real time. So when I get into my Mac to do the edits, everything is already there. Uh, all I need to do is just open it up. So there is no SD cards, all my cameras, everything streamed. And then it also makes recording and streaming identical. We'll get into more of the audio down here though. And this is my main box. This is what I'm using right now. This is everything I have. This is right now is a 5600X. Nothing too crazy. It's about a two, $300 CPU. I am using a Vega 64, which I recently switched out uh, to build that game stream. If you'd like to see the whole creation of that game stream box, I have a seven hour live stream, which I don't recommend watching, but let's say you have a lot of time on your hands, by all means, have at it. Uh, that was a very interesting build as I rebuilt this PC and that top PC live on stream. I'm very much an old man when I build because I like air cooling, I hate water cooling, and I don't do RGB or any flashy stuff. I just toss it into a cheap server rack box. And that's how I do all of my my boxes here, you'll see. <laughs> They're nothing really attractive. This one was a terrible buy. This was an $80 rack PC. I think it, maybe I got it for $60. I had to Dremel it and it's all beat up mainly because uh, the modifications I had to do. These two were a lot better. Uh, I'll, albeit, I like this Chinboro because these two racks I think were Roswell and not good. I really did not like these racks. This one though was probably the best one and I want to say the Chinboro is about 150, 160. This one was second place and this was dead last, but it was dirt cheap too. So you get what you pay for. Finally, we bring into the Soundcraft UI 16. Let's go ahead and pull it up and we have a nice interface for all of our stuff. Anytime I'm talking, I can do interviews, see it real time, do a test recording. I can go ahead and pipe in some copyright fee music, get, get a nice little ambiance going on here. This will actually pull in through my player and it actually hosts all these. This is all Harris Heller stuff over at Streambeats. Shout out to him. I use it all the time on my stream. Uh, just fantastic. But all of this I mix in real time and I can edit on any box. I can put this on an iPad, I can put it on Windows, Linux, you name it, my Mac. I can access it everywhere and it is great. Next up below that is the art. That does not have any web interface. That is fully tube. Everything is controlled with the dials on the front. I do some compression, some noise gate, maybe a little bit of gain on this guy, but for the most part, everything is done. And then below that is a U UPS. You can barely see it here. Uh, it's kind of tucked away right now. I was probably doing something. And then below that is my overhead speakers. I have a whole bunch of overhead speakers in this little space. I have about six ceiling speakers and that a receiver, uh, just a standard audio receiver, kind of pushes power and sound to all those. I turn that off usually during recording and live streaming as I'll have headphones on so I don't get a bunch of reverb <laughs> or feedback. That would be very bad. So that is my rack in a nutshell. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below. I know this was a little bit longer video, but a lot of people always ask me, hey, what's in that rack behind there? And mine is set up a lot differently just because of what I'm doing. I love it. It's great. But if I had to do it all over again, I'd put this in another room so I don't have to modify every single piece of equipment I put in here. Oh, it's been brutal the last couple years. So probably if I ever move, I will definitely be putting this somewhere else and not make it some kind of background aesthetic because to get that look was brutal. <laughs> but with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one.